Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and just recently we spoke about the use of Aurora HDR 2019 to create awesome HDR images. Now if you haven't seen the video, that's the one, do check it out, it is linked down there in the description. Now today we're going to use exactly that software to quickly create a rather, what you say, creative edit for this image which we will turn very quickly into that image using Aurora HDR 2019. So I'd say let's get going. Oh, on a quick note, if you're interested in getting the software yourself, you can use Let's Image as a promo code at checkout and save 10%. Or you just follow the link down there in the description. Let's jump right in. Alright, so the only thing I actually did was to drag and drop my three base images into Aurora HDR. So you see I have my minus two, my zero and my plus two exposure image. Now in this case I think I was having the camera in my hand without using a tripod, so I'm going to hit the auto align button. And also because I have a lot of waves, I want to have some ghost reduction in there. So let's hit that, create HDR, lean back for a moment and wait for the magic to happen. And here we go. So if I look at the initial before and after, I already like this way more. Look at that beautiful structure in the, the stones on the side and the rocks and the clouds. Amazing. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm probably going to use a simple look. Uh, I sometimes do that if I don't really know in which direction I want to bring that, uh, bring that particular image. So let's have a look and see what we could possibly apply here. So for that, first things first, let's switch the collections over from all of them to landscape. Uh, there might be others that fit, but I think I'm going to go straight away with warm landscape. Now the cool thing is I love how it adds a notch of color to the sky, really increases or gets these blues out of the water, but it does a little bit too much red in the rocks themselves. But that's definitely fixable. Now the reason why there's so much red suddenly the image, we can always check on the right hand side now. So let's get rid of the looks and check it out. So there's a bit more saturation and vibrance here. That's not the reason. But there is a LUT applied which is called the warm midtones. And if I take that out, we can see that the red will disappear from our image. So we know that's where it comes from. So we want to take it down a notch just a little bit. Maybe something, something like that. A kind of cool. Awesome. So it's still a little bit too much for me. So what I can do now, I can just simply go down to my HSL. Oops, how would you call that even part, I suppose. And I can take the reds and bring the reds down a little bit. And this will take this hardcore glow out of the um, of the rocks, right? So what I'm going to do is I maybe bring it down to somewhere like here. And also the orange just a little bit. We don't want to go too gray because then it's boring. But maybe something like that looks kind of cool. Awesome. And if I have a look at the before and after now, oh my Jesus Christ, that is a massive difference. And maybe we also want to add some darkness and a bit of a vignette. So let's jump down here, go to the vignette part, just create a little bit of a vignette, feather this out a little bit more and maybe reduce the size, maybe something like that. If we look at the before and after, after and before the vignette, that looks kind of cool. We can bring up the inner brightness a little bit as well, just a little bit, just like that maybe. Cool. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add some darkness to the foreground. So I'm just going to create a new adjustment layer, jump down to my curve, drag the curve down, maybe to something like that. And I'm only looking at the foreground right now. I'm going to hit the little brush symbol and I'm going to use the gradient mask to selectively only make sure the darkness is visible in the foreground. So maybe like that. Bring that up a notch. Cool. That looks good. And now once I have that, I can now use the opacity slider to make sure we don't make it too dark, right? So that's without any darkness adjustment. And this is with a little bit. I have to kind of decide how far do we want to tone that down. But I think something like that looks really, really cool. Awesome. I think I like that. Now let's also, just while we're at it, uh, use the crop tool that is uh, on the top here. And we can go in that and make sure our horizon is perfectly straight. Really absolutely perfect. I think it would be maybe something like that will straighten that out for us a little bit. Maybe even a little bit more. Oh yeah, should be good enough. Let's hit the enter key right there. And we could now continue and add more color to the sky and things like that. But to be honest, looking at the general before and after now using the slider, this is a massive, massive change already. And I'm a really a big fan of what we have achieved here in the end. Let's do it one more time. Get that slider and do the before and the after and the before and the after. In like what? No, no time whatsoever? Like at all? Nothing? And there we go, super quick but beautiful edit using Aurora HDR 2019. 
Anyway, I hope you did like the video. If you did like the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And I shall see you next time. Bye.